In this video, we're going to be working on a 2010 iMac that came in for a damaged LVDS connector. Let me grab the iMac quick. This is a 27 inch, already took it apart with Big Boss. And customer said the screen fell when trying to take it out and it damaged the LVDS connector. This is a 2010 model. We may or may not see any physical damage. The damage may be internal from within the connector itself. We do not know. Now, when customer plugs the screen in, nothing shows up on the screen. So, yeah, I do see damage. Look at the pins here. The pins has shifted and possibly broken. We do not know. So, a customer brought this in. He, oh, look at this. Okay. Now, I believe the customer is coming from about two hours away. He saw us on YouTube and he brought this in for repair. This is a 2010 model. We have an LVDS connector for the 2012 model, the non-retina display. So I never tried the 2012 connector on a 2010 model. Let's take a look at the connector. This will be the first time we try a 2012 connector on a 2010 model. Now, what I want to do is quickly check if the pins match it appears that they do perfectly what i want to do also is try to plug a cable here to see if it will fit let me do that right now quick okay so let's see and yes it fits it fits perfectly okay so let's take it out so we're going to solder it we, we have to press on the edges. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and do it. A 2012 connector. This is the mid-2012, not the late, because the late is a retina display and the connector is different. But this one here, every place I went to online, they say 2009, 2010 connectors. They do not mention anything about 2012. So this will be a good way to know if the 2012 will work on 2010. Based on what I see here, they are exactly the same and there's no special wirings inside. So whatever pins we see here, that's the same pin that will go to that part of the LVDS cable. So let's start by removing this connector. What we should also check is if there is any blown components on here, because on more recent models, the fuse can blow, the filter can blow. Like the black one on the right is a filter. Let's test to see if we have a continuous path and we do. Why is there flux here? Oh, and look at this. So this iMac has been worked on before. Customer did not mention anything about any soldering being done to this iMac. Hmm. Now, since this iMac has been tempered with before, customer will still get charged for this even if the iMac does not work. He's going to be charged a minimal fee to compensate for our work. I think what happened here is the connector was loose and customer probably tried to solder only the edges so he can make the connector stable. And while soldering the edge, he accidentally put a blob on that chip. I do not see the front pins having any flux on them or being tempered with. So it's basically the edges. The LVDS connector is big. It's the biggest one for the iMac. And let's use our big tip. That's a big connector. Look at this. What? Uh, the whole connector is not making a connection with the board. The whole connector is broken off the board and not just the edges. 
Let me grab this with the tweezer. So whatever you see here, that's a broken pin that came off here. That's a broken pin that came off here. That's a broken pin that broke off from here. And same thing with all of them. So all the pins are totally broken, 100%. Let's go ahead and clean up. We have a lot of cleaning to do. So we're gonna apply some flux. And let's start cleaning. I have the fume extractor close because this is gonna smoke a lot. We have a lot of pins and all of them are big. See, look at this. We do not want to put a lot of pressure when trying to remove those broken pins because we do not want to rip the pads off. So we're going to have to let the unleaded solder reach melting temperature before we can remove the broken pins. Patience is key. Okay, so we do not have any more broken pins on the pads. Now I'm gonna apply leaded solder over unleaded solder. That will make it a lot easier to wake those pads. And now we're gonna wake solder off the pads and solder on the new connector. So hopefully that 2012 connector will work on this machine. Pin count is the same, cable fits in perfectly, and the connector itself is not wired differently from the inside. So every pin that's going to its respected connection on that LVDS cable. So I do not see any reason why that connector will not work. There's nobody online that listed 2010 and 2012 being compatible with each other. Looks like nobody knows. So one way to find out. We do not need to have the soldering iron at 410 degrees. I'm gonna lower the temperature down to maybe 380.
correct icon. Let's go ahead and clean. And we need to also fix that solder blob that's shorting out the IC. Let's put the new connector on. Just like this. Okay, very good. Okay, so now we can safely just see. Oh, you see, those two pins are connecting to each other, and that's why the bridge is not... I'm going to clean up and run through those pins just one more time to make everything nice and pretty. Okay, so it's okay if those two pins have a blob here. That's not a problem. And let's clean up quickly and just run over those pins one more time before we connect and test. We're not going to be adding any more solder. We have enough solder on the pins. We have the perfect amount of solder on those pins. So let's start from here. We do not know if those two pins are supposed to connect. If they are connected from within the board, then that is the reason why they are bridging. 
Let's see if we can get rid of that bridge by desoldering those pins. So those two pins are connected to each other based on what we see here. Okay, so that's it, let's clean up. Actually, I still wanna do that very last leg on the left using the big tip. The connector is very solid. Let's individually test every pin. So we're gonna start from right here. Solid, solid, solid. These two pins, they're connecting to each other because they are internally connected via the board, so when you heat up one pin, solder is gonna flow to the other pin. Same thing with this one here. And everything is soldered perfectly. Now, I just wanna clean up with the brush and lint-free dry wipe. Make everything nice and neat. Looks beautiful, looks very good. Let me give this to Big Boss. We're gonna assemble the screen together and we'll see. Okay, so there are three cables we need to connect. The backlight cable, the LVDS cable, and the sensor cable. We're gonna grab the power cable. Notice fix. So we're gonna power it on. The iMac should make it chime. It's not chiming, which means it's not properly powering on. Now the fan did spin, but there's no chime. We're gonna try to do PRAM. Oh, here, all right, it came on. It came on, very good. So LVDS connector is fixed. Uh, and that confirms that the 2012 LVDS connector works on the 2010 model. So we did a very good job. As you can see, the operating system loaded. Everything is good. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions. Click on that bell icon if you want to be notified when we have a new video. And I'll see you again in the next video.